Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Phil from HowToFF6.com and this is my new Let's Break Final Fantasy VI tutorial series. To see the full series listing, go to HowToFF6.com. The content in this series is completely mod free and doesn't involve the use of any cheat codes. It's possible to do this on either console, either Final Fantasy III for Super Nintendo or Final Fantasy VI for Super Famicom. If you like this video, feel free to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to bring Umaro and Gogo to the World of Balance and the Floating Continent. Okay, so begin by starting a new game. You're going to play the game normally until you get to this point. This is when you first have Realm in the party and control of the airship. But make sure that you don't learn any spells at all on Edgar or Realm up until this point. Now what you're going to do is you're going to board the airship and get Edgar and Realm in the party. Make sure that you put Edgar in party slot 1 and Realm in party slot 4, just like this. Now what you need to do is you need to go down the stairs and talk to the merchant on the airship. You need to purchase a warp stone in order for this to work. So make sure that you purchase at least one warp stone. Take Edgar and Realm anywhere you like to go learn some spells. You need to learn on Edgar everything on Ifrit except for Drain, everything on Kirin except for Cure 2, everything on Shout, everything on Phantom, and then just Muddle from Stray. Then Realm just needs to learn Vanish from Phantom, but you can also teach her any one of the spells that you can teach Edgar. Now that you learn those spells, take the airship Realm and Edgar over here south of Narn. You're going to be looking in this forested area for a battle with two Leapers and two Dark Winds. But before you do that, let's take a look at your party. You need to set up your party before you do this with the correct parameter. So first off, make sure Edgar and Realm are both in the back row, as opposed to the front row. Edgar and Realm's health and magic points should be full when the battle begins, and then don't heal them during the battle at all. Next, take a look at Realm's equipment. She has a Kokobo brush in the right hand. Put it in the left hand. The right hand slot is going to get overwritten. And last but not least, your inventory. You need to have less than 51 items, so 50 or less items. You can see in the top right corner I have 49 items. The 51st item slot in your inventory is going to get overwritten, as well as a bunch underneath it, and then a bunch down here. You basically are best off just to shrink your inventory down to 50 or less items. The easiest way to do that is to sell off all the tonics and things that you can just buy back later. As well, you can equip some party members that aren't currently in the party. So make sure that you have 50 or less items. Then find the battle with the two leafers and the two dark winds. In the battle, this is what you're going to do. Just use Realm to vanish one of the dark winds. Leave Edgar out of this, he can just wait. On Realm's next turn, she's going to sketch the invisible dark wind, and that's going to trigger the sketch glitch. What basically is going to happen is that the sketch is going to miss, and apparently this is something that the developers weren't planning on being possible. So, the game looks for a battle sprite, but it doesn't know what battle sprite to look for, and apparently it just goes and wreaks havoc in the code. It'll change things about the way that your characters look. As you can see, Realm looks like Terra, Edgar looks like I don't know what. I've seen it where Edgar just is invisible anything can happen. But the outcomes are always pretty much the same. So you can map out what each sketch of each monster in each battle formation will do. You can take a look at your inventory. You'll see in the top right corner you have 82 items now, starting with the 51st being overwritten and a bunch down here. 
can see how it works. There's a bunch more down there. What we did this for is the gem box. That's what you need. So you're going to take this gem box now and equip it on Realm. Also, take a look at Realm's inventory. Now she has a Phoenix Down in the right hand. If you went and fought with this Phoenix Down, anything can happen. Lots of weird things happen and things can break. So make sure that you just unequip it right away. Do any testing that you like with that on an emulator. That's my advice to you. Now you're going to be missing another sketch. But before you do, make sure Edgar and Realm have full hit points and magic points. Fly here north of Narsh in the airship, and look for a battle with two red fangs. You're just going to do the same thing that you did last time. Use Realm to banish one of the monsters. This time with the gem box, she can just banish herself. Edgar is just going to wait until Realm's next turn, and then Realm is going to try to sketch the invisible red fang, which is going to cause the sketch glitch to occur. Now this time when we do the sketch glitch, it's going to do pretty much the same thing as last time, but it's going to take a, a few more minutes to recover. So you can tell that this works because Edgar's sprite kind of disappears, it glitches out, and Realm is just standing there and nothing is happening. But really, the SNES is going through a bunch of lines of code, changing things, looking for battle sprites, etc, etc. It's going to take a few minutes for you to regain control of your party. If the screen turns black, that's a good sign, but it doesn't always do that. Now take a look at this Fight Tools Magic and Item menu. You'll see it's kind of like a directional pad shape now. The Magic menu is over here on the right beside Realm's name. You can go ahead and open that up. Inside you're going to see a bunch of spots have been overwritten. Also Edgar still has the model spell, which is good because he's going to need that for the next part of this. So I'm just going to speed this up with a little video magic. When the game recovers, you're going to see that Realm now looks like Terra again. All you need to do is wait until Realm is ready to go and use Edgar to model her. Before he casts it, go into Realm's magic menu. You're going to see that it's been overwritten with this Law spell, L-A. This is actually in goal. Now this is what Zone Eaters cast on your party members, and if all of your party members get engulfed, you get taken to Gogo's Lair. So now we're going to cast Law twice. Edgar is going to model Realm, and then Realm, well modeled, is hopefully going to engulf Edgar and then herself. And if she does this properly, then we're going to be taken to Gogo's Lair. first thing that you should do once you get inside Gogo's lair is go into Realm's equipment. Remove the black belt from the right hand slot. If you fight with the black belt equipped, it's going to cause sketch like glitches and it can corrupt data. You want to be really careful with items equipped in the equipment slots. So just remove that for the purpose of this tutorial and then uh, carry on in Gogo's lair. So now you're technically in the world of ruin, but if you go outside, you're just going to find out that you're stuck on a little tiny island. Instead, go into Gogo's lair and get Gogo in the party. Then make your way back to this save point. What you're going to do is you're going to save the game, but you can't save the game anymore for a little while. So what you need to do is go into your item menu and select the warp stone. That's going to take you back to the world of balance map. Now just board your airship and fly up to the floating continent. Don't worry about getting every item, just make your way here as soon as possible. What you're going to do is you're going to jump back down to the airship. Now in order for this to work, you need to do exactly what I'm doing. So jump down to the airship 
and as soon as you hit the airship deck, you're just gonna walk straight over to the helm and click lift off. Now hold the accelerator button down and once you hit max speed, keep the accelerator button down and hit the X button. Then just walk straight back over to the helm and find the floating continent. Remember not to save your game, and as soon as you get to the floating continent, what you're going to do is find a battle. And then in that battle, you just have to die. So once your characters are all dead, what's going to happen is the game is going to bring you back to the last time that you saved the game. Which for us, was inside Gogo's lair in the world of Rune. As soon as you get back to Kogo's lair, save the game. Now that you saved your game, you can save the game anytime you want. Uh, you can also start collecting items again. I know there's some good stuff in Gogo's Lair, so if you didn't grab that already, go ahead and grab it. This time, instead of using your Warp Stone, what you're going to do is you're just going to walk out of Gogo's Lair. When you exit Gogo's Lair this way, you end up on the World of Ruin map, and because of what we just did with the airship, we end up with the airship as well. So, you've just broken into the World of Ruin early. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can do, including you can go and fight Kefka right now if you wanted to. Um, but what we're going to do for the purpose of this tutorial is we're just going to go right over to Nar, And we're going to get Mog and Umaro in the party. So land your airship at Narsh and bring three characters inside with you. Once you get Mog in the party and jump down into Umaro's lair, you end up in this room. I wanted to show you something here. There's an invisible switch. If you just walk down into here, you'll press it. Later on in the video, I'll show you what you just opened up. After you get Umaro, take the airship and land it over here. You need to land on this exact spot. So to know you're in the right position, you just can't walk any further east or south. Make sure that you're as far out on this little map as you can. Once the airship's in the right spot, just walk over here to Nikea. You're going to sail to South Figaro. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, you can't sail from South Figaro to Nikea, but this is your only option. If it wasn't your only option, there might be more spots on the map where you could transfer the airship from the world of ruin to the world of balance and still be able to board it but unfortunately it doesn't work so you're only able to use that one spot i showed you hop aboard and as soon as you do you're going to notice that you're on the world of balance map again so sail to south figaro what you're going to do after that is you're going to climb mount colt walk into the returner's hideout and jump into the leet river when you come out of the Leet River, you'll be standing in the same spot as Sabin when he jumped off the raft and washed up. After you pop out of the Leet River, all you have to do is go and walk over to get your airship. Now your airship is going to be found uh, just north of Doma Castle in uh, the coastline. Um, you'll notice that you can't walk any further north or any further west where the airship is and that's how you know it's really just the only overlapping tile for this whole part of the map uh, with the other tile in the world of ruin so if it wasn't for that one tile you wouldn't be able to do this now the thing I wanted to show you uh, that switch that we triggered that's invisible inside Umaro's lair opens up this little it looks like an entrance way but there's actually no teleporter here to bring you inside Umaro's lair. But you can kind of see how, you know, if you're looking at the map, like this little crevice here, this is where uh, Tritok the Esper is, and that's kind of where Umaro's lair is, so you can see what they're thinking here with the map design. I guess it kind of just shows that 
At some point, they did actually have it in mind to have Umaro be part of the World of Balance. Otherwise, they wouldn't have this entrance to his lair here. Um, I think the reason that Umaro probably got cut from the World of Balance could be that he's pretty overpowered here. Uh, it could also be memory constraints. I remember hearing that the developers were having problems with memory, uh, fitting everything they wanted on the SNES cartridge. I guess that's why they went to PlayStation for Final Fantasy VII. But um, you can kind of tell that uh, there's a lot of cut content too, so it seems like they really wanted to fit a lot more into this game. So that is how you bring Gogo and Umaro to the World of Balance and the Floating Continent. Uh, I think it's pretty cool because at this point you could always go back to the World of Ruin if you wanted to, the same way that we just did it, and then uh, head back here to the World of Balance as well anytime you like. Uh, you're always going to have the same warp stone no matter what because you end up going back to the save before you use it, and then you don't use it because you leave Gogo's Lair a different way. So. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, one thing is, you're not going to be able to do this if you're playing on Final Fantasy 3 for SNES version 1.1 because 1.1 fixes the sketch glitch. It's a patch that fixed that, so it no longer works. So regardless of whether or not you're trying this on a cartridge or a ROM, you're going to want to make sure that you're playing on version 1.0 before you get started. Um, uh, and don't worry, even if you're playing on version 1.1, there's still another way to bring these characters to the World of Balance. The trade-off is that you're not going to be able to bring them to the Floating Continent, but you will be able to bring them to the Cape to the Sealed Gate instead. Um, so definitely, I'm going to be making some videos to show you how that works. If this is something that you're interested in, you might want to check out my Twitch stream. It's twitch.tv slash howtoff6. On there, I'm going to be showing you more detailed information about these glitches and how they work and um, showing you an exhibition of everything that you can do with them. So definitely check that out. Um, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the Discord channel.